I hope you're doing super well today. In today's video, I wanted to talk about how I personally capture likeness in my portraits, and to demonstrate that, I'm going to be painting a portrait of Emily from The Corpse Bride. I love that movie, and since it's close to Halloween, I decided to do something kind of fun and spooky. I, I used to do a lot of uh, darker, more creepy art, and it's something that I really love to do. So whenever I have the chance to do it, I jump at it. Let me know if you like this kind of painting or the style, and if you want me to explore it a little bit more. But before I give you my five tips for capturing likeness, I wanted to say thank you so much to Yellow Images for sponsoring this video. Yellow Images is the number one marketplace for over 40,000 high quality premium mockups, creative fonts, and a creative store of amazing graphics like lettering, icons, illustrations, etc. I am a graphic design major, if you didn't know that, and I personally use Yellow Images mockups as often as I can because all of them work together for cohesive brand packages. It just takes a couple of minutes for you to download the mockups, to open them in Photoshop and put in your design to have a beautiful, complete image in the end. Yellow Images mockups also come in high res with lighting, shadows, and texture to give them a realistic feel and they're all cohesive. I personally use them in my portfolio this semester as I'm in a portfolio class and I just love how clean and professional they are. If you're interested in checking it out, I'll have 100 coupons down in the description with a 30% discount with my code SARATEPAS30. Be sure to take advantage of it, but I'm really grateful for Yellow Images for being a patron of my channel and for helping me put out content for you guys. I'm going to give you five of my tips on how to capture likeness. The very first, most basic one, is to think about the character's key features. I'm going to be referencing the corpse bride, Emily, and she's from a movie, you know, an animated movie, and I would imagine that you are going to be basing a likeness off of an image or a movie, you know, a reference photo, rather than a book. If it's a book, in a way you have your work cut out for you because it, it, there's a description of the character, so um, you can follow that description when painting them. The, some of the other tips apply to if you're drawing a character from a book as well. I'm going to be talking about using reference images. So the first tip is to think about the character's key features. What makes them unique? Um, in this case, Emily has large black eyes, she has blue hair, a super small nose, big lips, she's really pale because she's dead. <laughs> so those are all things that I kept in mind when I was um, sketching her out. I also kept her face shape in mind when I was drawing that, but just look at the anatomy, think about the key features that make that character. Maybe some characters don't have um, a really different, unique nose. Um, I mean, this character does, it's just rotten away. It's a kind of a bigger feature on her face <laughs> to illustrate effectively. So that's something I want to keep in mind whenever I'm looking at a reference image, how I'm going to translate that over to the sketch. Second tip would be to think about the colors associated with that character, and that goes into what the mood of the movie or the image is. For using a reference image of a person, like you're doing a commission, maybe somebody that you know, like your friend, your partner, anything like that, just keep the colors associated with that character in mind. What are their favorite colors? Um, if you know them in person, what colors do they love? What colors do you see them wearing often? Um, like colors that they use to decorate their house with. If they're a movie character, think about the color grading of that movie and shots with them in it. What do they wear? Like, do they wear all neutrals? Do they wear a specific kind of shirt? Like maybe they just always wear a yellow shirt or a striped shirt, that kind of thing. Think about the colors associated with that character. Thirdly, if you're still stuck on how to correctly portray this character, I would recommend making a mood board of reference images for that character as well as images that are thematically similar to the character's look or interests. So, in this case, if I was to make a mood board for Emily, I would put in a lot of blues, I'd put in paintings with pale skin tones, maybe baby's breath, wedding dresses that are distressed, anything that's gritty or grimy, um, moonlit images, those would all go into my mood board just to help inspire me for the final image. You can 
really quickly make mood boards on Pinterest. I always talk about how Pinterest really helps my references and my creative process, so I'd recommend that, um, especially if you have, let's say, four or five pins in your board, you can click the more like this button and it'll take you to a page of pins that are aesthetically similar to what you just pinned and it can help you really curate a specific style and look for that mood board. My fourth tip is to stylize the key features based on your personal style. So, um, in this case, I did not want to give her the same rotten nose she has in the movie. I think it's really cool that Tim Burton put that in the movie, but since I'm doing a much more realistic, well it's a semi-realistic style, but it's more realistic than the movie style, I don't want it to be too, like, gritty, grimy, nasty especially since she already will have like the holes of rotting in her flesh. Um, I didn't want to go overboard, I still wanted to be cutesy and pretty. So I kept that in mind. Her nose is a key feature on her face, very small, <laughs> just rotten way. Um, she just has like holes for her nostrils. I decided to give her a nose, but to make it small, like really dainty, and to give the nostril shape something similar to what the original character has. I kind of developed that feature to work with my style, but also to have elements of the original character design. Um, and I think that's perfectly acceptable, especially if you're going to make a character or a painting your own. You don't have to be canon to that original design, however you want that character to look recognizable. So I still gave her big dark eyes, I added a little bit of a green brown to them so they could have a little bit more warmth and dimension, I wanted that for my style. However, they are still dark, I didn't change anything about that. And another good question to ask yourself is what can you afford to change from the original design to make it yours? If I change the color of Emily's hair, that would be way too radical. Um, it wouldn't be recognizable since she has this iconic blue hair, but making it more airy and poofy does work with the character and my own style. There's nothing that would suggest her hair can't be just a little fluffier and more wavy. Uh, it's something that I really like to put into my own artwork, so I did include it. I changed that up, but I still kept that same color for the hair. Another example of this is I love adding pink cheeks and lips to the girls that I draw, but since she's dead, um, and she also mentions that she's jealous of Victoria because of her rosy cheeks, I tried to subdue the amount of blush that I added, and I made it more violet in tone than a warmer pink so that it could just look colder rather than alive and warm. Um, I don't really mind the lip color, I think it looks kind of cool, like even though she's dead and it's probably not that her lips would just be like white at that point. Um, I kind of like that they look like bloody and kind of like a vampire. <laughs> so that's just my own personal touch to the character. It's not something that um, is specifically canon, but I don't think it detracts from the character. It's just my own style and something that I wanted to add, you know, and also remembering that um, whenever you do, capture a likeness, you're still going to have your own personal style injected in it. You you don't specifically need to do a photorealistic copy of the original image. That doesn't make it unique to your own style. So I would just suggest that you stick true to your, your own style but add those elements in instead of trying to conform your style to the reference image. My fifth tip is if you want to change the character's outfit from the reference image or from anything that they wear in the movie or the person that you know in real life, think about what that character would wear. Think about something that is characteristic to them. What is their style? What would be natural for them to dress like? I could definitely see Emily in, you know, another torn Victorian dress, maybe a black dress, something brown, muted. I definitely don't see her in like a freaks and geeks outfit. I don't think that would be characteristic. And even if you wanted to do a modern rendition of this character, think about maybe an off the shoulder white top or something simple, elegant. Consider their personality and what they gravitate towards. If they have a more gentle, like elegant spirit or if they're louder with a more strong personality, how would you incorporate that into an outfit of your choice? I don't think you need to stick to the same outfits that the characters wear. If you know this person in real life, maybe you can give them a new outfit, but something that still is 
characteristic to themselves. If you have any other tips, feel free to leave them down in the description. I would love to know how you tackle this problem since it is a little bit of a challenge to um, portray likenesses and to capture them, but um, that's just the way that I do it. I would love to hear your feedback. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Also hit that notification bell so that you can know whenever I post new videos. I don't have a consistent schedule, but I still do post pretty regularly. So to make sure you don't miss any of my videos, you can definitely hit the notification bell. That would help me out quite a lot. But thank you so much to Yellow Images again for sponsoring this video and being such a great patron. Also, this is going to be October's Patreon postcard. If you'd like to pick it up, you can click the link in the description to check out my Patreon.